to this time, whether you're with us in this space on um, this evening, the 17th, or whether you're listening to this at some other time, I welcome you to this very special and precious space. And we just remind ourselves that this time of meditation on the word, this time where we reflect on the word and we respond in prayer from our hearts, is a sacred space. It is a separation from the cacophony of the world around us that impinges on us all the time. And it is a drawing aside as Jesus and his disciples often did when they were so rushed and so busy that they didn't even have time to eat, it actually says. They, Jesus said, come away with me for a while and let's be quiet. And they would withdraw to the other side of a lake or Jesus would often go up a mountain just to have that fellowship with his father in the spirit and with his disciples. And it's that kind of a gathering where we are saying we put aside all the things that demand our attention those voices that are inside our heads sometimes, those feelings that overwhelm our hearts, and sometimes they come from the outside and just make their way in and pressurize us and distract us. So tonight we very intentionally choose, and I invite you to choose to put aside all distraction for this time and to be still, and to allow the word and the spirit to speak to us and to take the truth and the power of the words of God made life to us by the spirit from our heads all the way down into our hearts and the innermost parts of our being. Um, we remind ourselves of that beautiful verse, be still and know, know in the depths of your being, be still and know that I am God. God, sovereign God, all-powerful God, God who is your father, God who is the Jesus who loved you so much that he died for you. Holy Spirit, who makes every word of the Lord life to us. It's a beautiful place to be present and quiet in ourselves, in his presence. And right at the start, I'd like to welcome Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you that you make the words of the Lord in the Bible, in the scriptures, you make them life. You make them come alive to each one of us in such a personal way. And we know that you speak through those words, under the words, over the words, beyond the words. Your voice is so precious to us, Lord. It resonates in our hearts and it enriches us and it revives us and restores us and fuels us, propels us into all that you have for us. And so we welcome you, Spirit of God, and we look forward to this time where you're going to revive, you're going to speak in such beautiful tones to us. We're going to encounter you. We're going to experience your glory, your commissioning, your destiny. You're going to restore things to our lives and hearts that the enemy tries to steal. 
And so we relax in your presence. We let go of the things that we have carried, the things of the world that we have carried. This particular day, but also through the last week, through the last while, all the things even unconsciously that we have carried, we let go of those things. We release stress. We release busyness. We release tension in every part of our bodies, necks. We no longer carry the yoke of slavery. Tonight, God's freedom, the freedom for which Jesus Christ set us free, is going to find new dimensions in our lives. We let go of every heavy yoke and burden. Thank you, Lord, that your yoke is light and your burden is easy. It's light. It's easy. We release the tension throughout our bodies. And we open ourselves wholly and complete, body, mind, soul, spirit, to you, Lord God, Holy Spirit. We open our hands to receive. We release the tightness in the center of our body. And we breathe deeply. Deep, slow breaths in the center of our body. Let go of the tension up here. This part is often where we breathe when we panic. No, let go of anxiety. Let go of panic, of fear of the future. What if, when, what, how? Let God lead us. Let him take us on. Breathe deeply from the center of your body. Slowly, deep, Slow breaths. To prepare yourself to receive. Release into his hands and receive from his hands. As we breathe and fill our lungs with physical air, we remember his spirit. Breath of life, the spiritual breath of life. And we say, fill us, Holy Spirit, with your breath of life. Renew us. Renew us. Keep us open, spirit-filled life bearers to the world. The world presses in on us. We reject that and receive a new infilling, a new reviving from you tonight. And this is part two. You might remember last time we met two weeks ago, we did the power of forgiveness. And then I said we'd go on to part two this week to explore the depths and the abundance of the richness and the adventure of all that God has for us in our new identity. And so I've called this part two, New Creation Paths of Life and Love. New Creation Paths. And as we walk these pathways as the new creations that God has always intended us to be in him, born again, to be a new creation in Christ, that we truly carry the spirit of God, the glory of God, the power of God, of that life. 
that love that he saved us into, into the world around us. And so it's a real privilege to invite you into a space where I believe with all my heart that God is going to restore things that the enemies tried to steal from us. He's going to revive us. We're going to feel like we have had an added revelation through the spirit of the things that God wants to make new. And before we go to the scriptures, I'd like to show you a picture of God's original intent, but this is a photograph of the work of Michelangelo created during the Renaissance and his kind of depiction of God giving Adam life. I'll hold it close to the screen. And you might notice that the colors, it's not a black and white photograph. It's actually a color photograph, but the colors are dark, dark colors. And over the years, over the centuries, people went to see this in the Sistine Chapel. He painted it on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and people would look at this and it got year by year more grime on it, more dirt, more dust, all the toxicity of the air of the city impinged on it and imprinted on it and it just became darker and duller and duller year by year. And to the extent that people felt that that's how he had created it. And then in the late 80s or 90s, people began to restore the paintings to their original colors. And you can see there's almost no comparison. It's so fresh, it's so light, it's so bright. The original intentions of the painter were revealed and people were almost shocked at how bright the colors were. And I believe that that is just an illustration of how our lives, it's just a metaphor for us tonight to start out by saying, God, our lives can become so dull, so lackluster, so dark, so heavy. And that's how we are carrying your gospel and your spirit into the world with this veneer of the world all over us. Jesus called us to be in the world, but not of it. And somehow all that stuff starts to attach to us. And we carry it in these vessels, which don't reflect his light or his glory. There's like a veil over us sometimes. And we need to hear what the spirit wants to say to us tonight. And I believe with all my heart, the Holy Spirit wants us to live vibrant lives, to show to the world, to tell to the world the story of the glory of God in the way we live through the spirit. That we glow with his love, we glow with his life. And I'm sure we've all had experiences where people have said, you look so happy. What is it? Why? Do you feel so peaceful? Why do you seem so full of joy? And I believe God wants to upgrade that tonight. It's like, I want to take all that stuff that the world puts on you. I want to completely take the veil off you tonight. Freedom. Freedom in Jesus. The veil removed. The veil through which you see the world and yourself. And the veil that sometimes covers the glory that we bear by the spirit inside us. And so remember that. Remember that the veil is taken away and God wants us to reflect his glory. He wants us to be new and vibrant as we were designed to be, not covered by the grime and the toxicity of the world. He wants us to be free to be who we were designed to be, who we were created to be. 
and who we were then reborn to be as a new creation with the spirit of life shining in and through us. So exciting, so exciting. I want us to ask the spirit right now to activate our inner eyes. We've seen an image, two images, and later we'll see images on the screen, but I want to pray. Holy Spirit, would you activate our inner eyes? God, we thank you that you've given us imaginations, you have given us spiritual senses, to hear you better, to live by faith, to see the unseen in the spirit that makes it more real than anything that we only see with our physical eyes. And we thank you that you speak to us through what we see and hear in the physical. But I pray tonight for a deep and powerful activation of the eyes of our hearts, and the ears of our hearts. We want to hear your voice. We want to tune in to what you are saying to us tonight, God. Holy Spirit, we want to hear the tiniest whisper. We want to feel even the smallest nudge. We want to see what you see. Activate our inner senses, spiritual ones. Tune our ears, Holy Spirit, to what you are saying. And so let's look at our first scripture. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 17 to 19. I read it in the free Passion Translation makes it so fresh and it accesses our hearts sometimes in a different way from the words that we know very well from the other translations. But I want to encourage you at this point, please dig into these scriptures in your own devotional time, in your own time with the Lord. Dig into them. Look at them in different translations. It's so powerful. And the Holy Spirit will continue to speak to you from the context and from the, the verses that we read. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, verse 17. Everything is fresh and new. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. In other words, it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world not even keeping records of their transgressions. And he has entrusted to us the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God for others. Let's start with everything being fresh and new. Reject dullness. Reject the sense that you know God fully reject the sense that you know all the scriptures off by heart. Good that you do, but receive freshness. Receive fresh revelation tonight. The Spirit always gives us fresh bread. And let's start at the beginning with everything is fresh and new. God has made all things new. Like us to reflect, close your eyes and with your spiritual senses, smell the sense of freshness. The freshness of the Spirit of God. Think of your favorite fresh and new aromas just as a comparison, as a simile. Think of the fresh smell of grass and earth after rain. Think of the fresh 
air, fresh scent of the ocean, salt of the ocean. They're all pictures of his life and freshness. Think of freshly baked bread. His manner to us, he's the bread of life. And it's always, there's a freshness, there's a newness. There's nothing stale or old, dull. There's no apathy, it's fresh. Think of newly baked foods, fresh, fresh food, tasty, delicious aromas. It's like I hear God say, my child, this is what I've prepared for you. I have a continual feast for you because you're reconciled through Jesus the door. You're reconciled to me. You're part of my household, the household of the Father, God. There's always a place for you at the feasting table. Every day, the fresh bread of the word, the freshness of the spirit, a feast I've prepared for you. Don't become dull, lackluster, apathetic. Be full of the joy and the delight of what you have being reconciled to me, feasting at my table, new creation, my son, my daughter. And then partner with Jesus, the door. Stand at the door with Jesus and say, come, come. Do you smell that fragrance? Do you smell the freshness? Do you smell the deliciousness? Come in, invite others into that space. <laughs> Friends, if we're lackluster and we're just dull, printed with the grime of the world, nobody wants that. And that's not what we carry. We are new. We are new creations in him. And he has set us free from all that the world would want to press onto us. He's set us free to be new creations in him, bearing and carrying his glory. And I want to encourage you tonight, those who still feel, I'm not a glory carrier. How can I carry the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation. I, I still feel myself unworthy. You are not rejected. As we dug into the theme of forgiveness, remember, God has forgiven you. The chains of unforgiveness were broken. The gate that was held closed by unforgiveness was that chain was broken, it's unlocked, it's open. You're free and he no longer remembers your sins. He's removed them as far as the east is from the west. You're not rejected. You're not standing on the other side of Eden, cast out and unworthy because of Jesus dying on the cross. You are accepted in the beloved. You are welcomed in to what he has restored. Reconciliation with the Father. Entry into paradise. Like he said to the thief, remember? We did that last time. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. The door is open. The veil is torn. You have been forgiven so that you can become a forgiver and the one that welcomes people in to the new life of a new creation in Christ. So exciting. And I want us to just reflect briefly on the privilege, the beauty, the security, the delight, and the passion that we have in partnering with Jesus. 
surrendering to his love, being filled with his spirit and carrying that newness, that vibrancy, that love, that life to others. No matter what, no matter how we feel, no matter what the circumstances, this is who we are in him. And so we ask him tonight. We pause in his presence. Dear Jesus, restore to us tonight the excitement, the delight in being in you and having you in us. The delight of being a new creation, carrying the vibrancy, the freshness, the color, the power, the fire, the glow of being a new creation, taking you into the world around us. Holy Spirit, reveal all the abundance that we have in Jesus. Reveal it to us in a fresh way. Take away the veils of rejection, despair, feeling shut out, feeling half-hearted, feeling apathetic, all those things that the world would like to cover us with. We give them to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, remove all of that from us so that we can, with unveiled faces, reflect your glory. Thank you, Lord. We read from Psalm 16. The choice. No matter what, we have chosen. And I'm reading from verse 5. Lord, let's affirm this in our hearts, each one of us together. Lord, I have chosen you, you alone as my inheritance. This is the Passion Translation again. You are my prize, my pleasure, and my portion. I leave my destiny and its timing in your hands. Your pleasant path leads me to pleasant places. I'm overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you. For you have given me the best. The way you counsel and correct me makes you praise, makes me praise you more and more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom, showing me what to do next. Because you are close to me and always available, my confidence will never be shaken. For I experience your wraparound presence every moment. My heart and soul explode with joy, full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. For you bring me a continual revelation of resurrection life. The path to bliss that brings me face to face with you. And this certainly is a reference in the psalm to what happens after death that he doesn't abandon us. And there is the joy of resurrection and the path to bliss in heaven. But I, I also believe that it's talking about the life we're living now because the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And that joy that bliss of the resurrection spirit, powerful, full of life, more life than we can ever even imagine, is the spirit that lives inside of us. The resurrection spirit that brings us confidence, rest, 
peace, security, joy, joy that is heavenly, that is nothing to do with circumstances. And Lord, we want to say to you together tonight, no matter what the difficulties are that we face, no matter what our circumstances, even the ups and downs of emotions here that we experience in the natural. We say, Jesus, give us downloads, downloads from the heavenly realms through your Holy Spirit, downloads of your joy, your peace, your love that passes all understanding, that exceeds all human limitations. Jesus, we want to be your glory bearers. As new creations, we want to shine with your love and your joy, and we want to carry the power of your life in us as new creations. People will see your glory and we can open the door and say, come, come, come and be born into this wonderful family, restored, reconciled, restored to the original intention for which we were created. Spirit, make this a deep revelation, please. And not only a revelation here, but a transformation in our hearts. Your shalom, peace, your joy, your well-being shining through us like a love letter from you to the world that all can read all can see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And I want to say, before we spend time reflecting on a beautiful image that Ruby has on the screen for us, the picture almost the parable in some ways, a metaphor, a picture of the butterfly is so powerful. And we often explain to those who are getting baptized, those who are young, somewhere between the ages of eight and 14 or whatever, that actually it's like a butterfly. And this was drawn by my granddaughter who got baptized last year the vibrant colors of new life in Christ. And we know that the butterfly is a worm, a worm that crawls on its stomach everywhere, that wrapped itself in a cocoon in order to transform. And apparently I've discovered with great amazement that inside that cocoon it's actually a watery mush it doesn't just quickly grow wings it turns into a watery mush and it comes out an entirely new creature so we think of dying to our old life and being transformed into a totally new life a new creature and if i look at the way she's drawn that little worm he looks so dark and grumpy and sometimes that's just how we feel. We feel dark and grumpy and we forget. We're like, Jesus, you know, I feel dark. I feel grumpy. I feel bad. I feel whatever we feel, whatever the dark feelings and thoughts. We say, Jesus, that's not who I am. You have made me a new creation in you. You have made me a whole new creation in you. Reveal your colors in me. 
reveal your life, your vibrancy, your joy. And while we listen to the music that Ravini has prepared for us and look at the beautiful image on that screenshot, I want you to approach the Lord in your reflection, in your prayer, in your talking, your conversation with him. Start with thankfulness, thanking him for the truth of your new identity and then asking him to restore, revive those colors, that freshness in the spirit. Thank you, Ravini.
so beautiful, so fragile, just a butterfly, really. There's some butterflies that float on the wind and make their way through paths that no one quite understands. But these butterflies float and fly on the thermals to different continents, from one continent to another, to an island or to another landmass. And somehow they withstand being buffeted to pieces and they manage to arrive at their destination. And so God knows our fragility, God knows our fears, God knows what hinders us. And he's going to take us along paths that are sure, new life paths as we give ourselves to him. I'd like to read from Psalm 32, and we have read this before, but I'd like to read it again. Verse 7. Lord, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from troubles, surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shouts rescue me and release my breakthrough. He sings over us. That's what the word tells us. He sings over us. He rejoices over us. And I love that line, your joyous shouts of rescue release my breakthrough. And you surround me with songs of gladness, protecting me from troubles. As we reflect on perhaps our mistakes, our fragility, our problems, our fears, our inadequacies, Maybe the smallness even of our world. You think about where is your influence? How big is it? How large is it? Do you just sometimes feel like a small butterfly? Never underestimate what God can do and the sphere of your influence. Think of those butterflies thousands of miles across the ocean, across the oceans. And the Lord can use you for his glory in ways that we can't even imagine as we trust him for breakthrough, for protection, and for guidance. I'm reading now from verse 8 and 9 in that free translation of the Passion. I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. His perspective, his sovereignty. He's close. I will stay close. I will instruct, guide, advise, lead you forth and guide you with my perspective. What a relief, Lord. What a relief that we can be guided by your perspective. Because our human eyes is restricted, is so restricted in what they can see and perceive. But we're not born again into humanness. In our humanity, we are born again by the Spirit into a life filled and empowered by you, Holy Spirit. What joy, what relief, and what release. We feel your joy, Holy Spirit. Manifest, please, your joy into every heart joined in the space. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit. And now let's look at the next verse. The next part of the verse. So, don't make it difficult. This is not connecting to how he leads us forth with his eyes as our guide. And it says, so don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you've not been before, don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. It sounds like the voice of the parent, of the father God. Come on now. Don't be stubborn. Come with me. He is never going to lead us into something destructive, bad, evil, broken. The way might be difficult sometimes. The winds might be strong. There might be storms. There might be dangers. But his spirit alive in you is always with you. Papa God is with you. Jesus is there by your side. And the Lord is your guide. Pathways of new creation, life, and love. He always guides you through the valleys, through the ups and downs. He always guides you into those good places. As Psalm 23 says, his goodness and love pursue us all the days of our lives. Such beautiful truth. And I believe tonight, already sense in the spirit, that the new creation paths he wants to take us on have new levels of life and joy and passion in him. New levels of experiencing his love and his power and his glory and being able to express that in ways sometimes that we're aware of, sometimes not. But he's going to work through us as we yield ourselves, body, mind, soul, spirit, and leave the choice of those paths to him. And then we choose to respond and follow where he leads and go with him. And it's so beautiful, although he leads, he's beside us, he's close. He's not miles off saying, where are you? You can't keep up. He's with us leading, shepherding us along those beautiful paths. And so the next scripture, Colossians chapter 1, if you're following in your Bibles, Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Once again, the free passion translation. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise. Doesn't that sound like an adventure? This is a God of adventures beyond what we can actually even hope for or imagine. And we trust him. He's a good God. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise. That has been concealed from the world for generations. But now it's being revealed, unfolded, and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you, verse 27, living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. There's so much in that scripture. The real treasure is within. But as that is unfolded and lived out, 
leads to all the beautiful paths that God is taking you on. All the ways he is opening up for you and all the ways that he's encouraging you to take his life into spaces, situations, relationships, communities, even different countries. Before we read it again, I'd like to invite you into a visualization just briefly again. Picture yourself on quite a dusty, barren road, a barren landscape. There are rocky stones, even some larger rocks in the path. It's not an easy one, not an easy one to walk. It feels like a desert sometimes. You're walking on this path and then God gives you his perspective. You notice something you haven't seen before. There's an oasis right near you, right near the path. And there's a way that leads to that. And you walk towards it and you find yourself near water. There are trees of all kinds growing there. Luscious, green plants. There are springs of living water and pools. And he's saying, drink. Drink from the spring. I am the river of life. Drink from the spring. All your springs are in me, says Jesus. Bathe in the water of the pools. And there's a picnic feast set out for you on the banks of this oasis. Picnic feast that you're invited to eat of, participate in, join into, to drink and be refreshed, eat and be nourished. And then there's a gift for you to unpack. And you open the treasure chest and you look inside and it's filled with all the inheritance of the treasure, treasures that there are in Jesus. The gift of the robe of righteousness, which he encourages you to wear. We have no righteousness of our own, but he's asking you to put on his righteousness. To put on his jewels, his glory that he has given you as a free gift of grace. And you realize that the true treasure is actually in you. It's not something other that can depict it. Treasure chest of hope. But then you realize there's a deeper level to this. You, yourself, are the treasure. In you is the treasure. The word says also that we are like jars of clay and the treasure we carry, power, glory, the life is within, in those jars of clay. And so let's read that scripture again, seeing the invitation of unpacking the treasure of who we are in Christ. And the beauty of how he feeds us, he fills us, he nourishes us, and he revives us. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations. But now it's being revealed, unfolded, and manifested for every holy believer to experience it's like that veil, it's been concealed. God wants to take the veil off our faces. He wants to reveal the freedom, the newness of life that we have in Christ as new creation. And to say, Jesus, in you, I'm new. I am filled with glory. I'm filled with the colors and the vibrancy of your life. 
living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory, from glory to glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest filled with the riches of glory for his people. God wants everyone to know it. He wants you to carry that glory inside you, to be filled and overflowing with his joy, his love, the vibrancy and color of that new creation life. He wants to wash away all the grime, the toxicity of the world, the dark layers that the world wants to put on us. And he wants you to shine, unveiled faces to shine with new creation life. And he wants to lead you down these beautiful paths of his choosing. Our final scripture is Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. New life in Christ. In the same way that you received Jesus, our Lord and Messiah, by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further and further into union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you continually are infused with strength and encouraged in every way. The journey down the pathways of your life are journeys of faith. You see, you hear, you receive by faith, by activation of those inner eyes, inner ears. Let the veil be taken off your mind and your heart tonight. Journey deeper each step of the way. Journey deeper into union, intimacy, oneness with Jesus. Nothing can come between you. His love is so strong and so great. He loves you. He adores you. He remembers none of the things that you think disqualify you. He loves you. He affirms you tonight. Let every step of our pathways be deeper unity, deeper union with Jesus. And remember those trees that we said grow at the waters. The reason they are lush and beautiful is because of the water. Their roots go down deep. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with his strength, encouraged in every way. What joy, what delight. His shouts of joy rescue us, protect us, guide us. Let us shout and sing in our spirits in thankfulness for this amazing life he's saved us into, birthed us into, can fly like the beautiful butterfly, can be lifted on the thermals of his spirit, and we can draw up like the trees through their roots, draw up the waters of life, vibrancy, strength, and joy from him as we sing our final song in our hearts. It's a beautiful word. Let's enjoy it. Thank you, Ruvini.
Christmas in 